Hey guys and welcome to another episode of the Happy Knitting Podcast. My name is Julia, I'm coming to you from the UK and today is November 30th, 2023. I am once again going to upload or film this in little snippets because that's what works at the moment and you guys seem to be very divided but I think the majority likes this format and it works for me right now which is not to say it might work differently in the future. But for now, we're just going to go with it. Today is, like I said, it's a Thursday and oh, it is quiet. Finally, my son ended up being quite ill for the whole week, essentially. Um, and today, for the first day, he is back in nursery. I'm back at work. My husband's in London, so I have the house to myself. So I thought I would upload a little cheeky podcast snippet in my lunch break because I do have things that I finished and I have an exciting new cast on so I want to show you. So I have been on a roll trying to finish things because I mentioned this to you last week I have a lot of whips I also have a lot of stuff that I want to cast on and I have, I have started a new thing so I have been trying to really make myself work on some finished uh, achieve some finished objects. So I have finished this little guy this is my son's rainbow sweater. It is a flax by Tin Can Knit. I did not do the garter ridges. I did the four to six year size because I find the sizing on a kid's version of these very small. And my son is quite big and tall for his age. Um, I used different kinds of woolly wool. They're um, British wool by Woolly Knit and Jamison and Smith and I think there's some whole super soft in here that I was sent by my lovely friend Mel. Um, this isn't great here, I'm not sure if you can tell. I actually changed colour after splitting for the sleeves so I ended up having one row of the orange under the sleeve which isn't perfect but it's a sweater, it's going to be on a three-year-old and he's going to have his arms down and you won't see. And also, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be perfect. I think this turned out really, really cute. I washed and blocked it. And I was really nervous that one of these colours, especially these dark ones, was going to bleed into the yellow. But I was really careful and nothing happened. It turned out beautifully. So now that I've shown it to you, I can snip off the ends and actually make him wear it. Um... He's really excited about this. I just knew as soon as he puts this on, it's going to, you know, not look as nice anymore. So there you go. Flax sweater, fingering weight version done. Next up, uh, last night, I also finished this tiny little cowl. Again, the ends are woven in. Have I snipped them off? No. And this is knit out of dropped air. There's a random, this is what I use for stitch markers. <laughs> Um, there's something attached to it. This is a ball of drops air. Don't ask me the colorway. I don't know. It may be like salmon pink or something. It's a bit more bright than it's showing up. And I just made this really simple cowl. It started out as just a 2x2 two two rib, but then I got bored. So I basically alternated knits and pearls every five rows. So I would do knit two, pearl two for five rounds. And then switch to pearl to knit two for five rounds and so it's a reversible sort of rib like texture it's really cozy um and yeah this doesn't look very fancy but i find these little cows really 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 useful because the house gets so cold and i'm a person i will always have a sore throat and this is just comfortable you can just throw it on and it doesn't need you know draping and doing fancy things like a shawl so I'm really getting into cowls, which you will know if you've been watching the last couple of months. I have also really been trying to finish my socks. Can you tell I'm actually finishing things? I just need to get things off my needles because I think my mental load just cannot stand this anymore. This is my second Christmas sock. So you may remember last time I showed this to you, I think I knit like 13 rounds on the rib and now I'm halfway down the foot which I'm really really excited about. These are again my 19, 1974 Christmas socks by Bird Street Yarns. It's in their glitter base which is beautiful. It's a beautiful colorway. 
And yeah, I, my plan is to finish these today. I think that should be perfectly doable. Um, and yeah, that'll be another thing off my list. And I am very excited because, because I am planning so many new projects. I am just very, very much in the knitting mood at the moment. I could just knit anything and everything. I wish I didn't have a day job because I just want to be knitting. Um, I mean, can you tell? Instead of having lunch, I'm spending my lunch time talking about yarn. Um, so I did cast on a new thing. And I'm not sure if anyone can tell from this. This is going to be a poncho. Hang on. Ignore the yarny mess. This is going to be a poncho and I'm dropping stitches. This is the Kuri In Poncho by Amy Palco. She just released this. I think she was originally just recreating a poncho that she used to have in the past. And like many, I fell in love with it. And luckily she was coaxed into making a pattern. So it's going to be a really simple poncho. Um, I've done the ribbing and it has, I'm not sure if you can tell, it's got shorters in the rib, which I think is really clever. And now this is going to be the simplest project in the world. It's going to be very easy to work. And I've never been a poncho person. I will be honest. I don't feel like I'm a poncho person. But I work from home and it gets very cold. And a lot of times... I just need something that looks nice that I can put on because like this, I look like I'm wearing three different kinds of outfits in one, which is fine. But sometimes I don't want that. And I think this is going to be, my idea of this is that it's going to be like a wearable shawl. Like I'm just going to, you know, put it over my head. I'll be dressed. It'll be warm around my neck because I mentioned I like having something around my neck. Um, I mean, I could wear this over a jumper, so it could be an extra layer. And I also think once it gets a bit warmer again, because it is freezing at the moment here in the UK, in spring, it might be nice to actually just throw on like a little flowy poncho over like a t-shirt. It could be quite useful or for nursery drop-offs, stuff like that. So I have started it and I have completed the ribbing and the short rows. So now it's going to be smooth sailing. And the yarns that I'm using, excuse the crinkling, this is Drops Surrey Alpaca. I'm using Stash. This is the only thing I had a Stash that works. And I mean, it's beautiful. I love the color. I love this so much. So this is Drops Surrey Alpaca. Um, colorway number 24. And I have a couple of balls of this. I just, I'm just winging it. I think it should be enough. We will see. I have no idea. And... For the other yarn that I'm using, I am using another shade bag of my Holst yarn. This is Holst Super Soft in possibly the most beautiful color I've ever seen. And I am sort of kicking myself for being sensible and not getting any of the yarn in their Black Friday sale because this is beautiful. I mentioned in the past how I have a couple of these little shade bags, I think they're called. They used to have these in the, in the store sometime last year essentially you get all these like little balls of yarn so they're quite cheap because it's tiny quantities but each bag says it's at least 200 grams so it should be enough very very affordable the colorway is ember and yeah i think it's going to be beautiful and maybe one day i need a cone of this ember colorway because i think even without this surrey it would be a really really beautiful color and i, I love it i think it goes really well with my hair and uh, lack of tan <laughs> by what's it called you know how you have different colors that suit different people i think this works for me at least that's what i'm telling myself so yeah very excited about this i've been trying not to work on this so much because i want to again finish other things but yeah this has got me really excited and i think this will actually be really great once i get into the rhythm of it for like meeting, knitting, like anything that's mindless, um, this would be great because it's just going to be going round and round and round until this thing is huge. So yeah, there you go. That's my little nitty update. I am going to have some lunch and enjoy the fact that I can finally work without having a toddler with me, which was not fun. Also, as you can probably tell, I have a cold. I decided to record anyways because really... My son's in nursery. I'm always going to have a cold for the next three months. But yeah, sorry if you can hear that. 
And yeah, I will check in with you guys soon, hopefully with some more FOs or at least some poncho progress. Take care. See you later. Rainbow! It's a rainbow! And I do the rainbow. Starting. It's the rainbow. Bounty, 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 Hi guys, it is now Saturday, the 2nd of December 2023, um, and I am back with some knitting content. I am wearing my Festive Yoke sweater, which is by Ellie of Scandier. I knit this, I think the second it came out, two years ago, and I think she properly released the pattern last year, I think. And I still really love it. I think this is my... Unofficial, unofficial Christmas sweater. I do wear it all winter long because I think it's not, oh, I mean, some people would call it overly Christmassy, but I think it's okay. And it's just a perfect excuse when, like, I went out for dinner with some friends last night. And you can just say I'm wearing a Christmas sweater and then you go out in this, like, cozy thing and everyone else is wearing their, you know, cheaply made crappy sweaters. But I think this actually looks really nice. Um... I made this using the Hobby Highland Wool, which I think we established is the same as Philcolana, Philcolana Pernia. Um, and I wasn't sure at first about my yarn choice. It's a very affordable non-superwash yarn, although I would say it feels less woolly than other yarns. It's very sort of spongy and bouncy and like thick, if that makes any sense. I really like it. It makes a really nice sort of squishy fabric. And it has peeled a little bit, although I did peel it today, but it's actually really soft. I would say this is one of the softest non-superwash sweaters that I have, and I do really like it. Um, I'm tempted to make another one one day, not anytime soon. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one is quite fitted, and I think I just from the get-go I made a size smaller than the fit that I would have wanted. So it fits perfectly, but I just love the idea of like an oversized, more cozy sweater. This one is, I don't know, it has a bit of ease, but not very much. But yeah, I really like it. And I would actually, I think I would make it again in the same yarn, which is always, I think, a good review. Um, yeah, sorry, just fixing my hair. Um, yeah, so knitting. Have I finished my socks? No. Have I worked on them? Barely. <laughs> but I think, I think I'm relatively close to finishing my socks. But I have been busy with other things because, look, it's finished. I finished my Dahlia blanket. Once again, for the last time, <laughs> this is the Dahlia blanket by Lucy of Attic24. I'm using her Dune yarn pack, which was for a different blanket. And I rejigged the colors because I wanted a different color order. I think I used all but two or three. I don't remember. Um, but it's a free pattern and the yarn in the pack is Stylecraft Special DK, which I have come to really enjoy. I wasn't sure when I started it. and um, This was my first time using that yarn. But it's, it's, it's actually really lovely and soft. And I think this stitch, I'm not sure what it's called, it just creates a really nice sort of almost drapey fabric which I think sometimes crochet just isn't very drapey um, but yeah this is like it's like a flat fabric it's really drapey I used my four millimeter hook and yeah it's just created something that feels really really nice and I think last time we talked I had just started on this sage green strap and as you can tell I finished it off I was considering going back into like a lighter blue and lilac but A, I was kind of done with it, and B, I think the contrast would have been too harsh. And I feel like in terms of the entire like color spread, not that I can show it to you properly, but it just works, like it's, it's pretty balanced from like the pinks to the yellows to the blues. And if I would have continued, it would have just been a bit like blue heavy. And I don't know, I love these colors. They're like such, they're such a weird combination, but I think it really works. It's like... The seascape uh, with pink because you always need pink right and yeah I, I really love how this came out um, so I've I wove in my ends as I went along um, I just crochet them in actually cut them all off last night all I need to do is to wash this because supposedly it gets nicer once you wash it 
but it's it's really nice now so who knows maybe i'll just use it for a while and wash it once it's easier to dry because at the moment it is freezing in the uk and if you know uk houses you know you're always battling like the humidity and everything in the houses and like all uk houses i've seen have mold issues i think ours included i think we're on top of it now but i have a huge basket of knitwear that needs to be washed but obviously that can't go in the dryer and I'm just trying to like find a warm day. But when is that going to happen? It's not even going to go uh, above zero today, I think. So anyways, one day when it's better drying weather, I'm going to wash this. I know I know I could put it in the dryer, but why use the dryer if I have, don't have to? Anyways, the blanket is done. I love it. I've actually been using it today and it is, it's, it's really lovely. It's really soft. I really like it. And remember when I started here and I was like, it looks really weird, just trust me. And I had to trust myself a lot with this because I'd seen a picture of someone doing something quite similar and it looked great. And in the beginning, I wasn't sure if it was going to turn out nice, but it was so worth it. It actually, I think, turned out exactly like I wanted it to. And yeah, that's my Dahlia blanket. Um, so yeah, I have two new castons. First up, and that's sort of also why I rushed to finish this, is you may remember from last week I told you that my son needs a rainbow blanket, which is ridiculous, but I am here to, you know, entertain all his crazy ideas. If he wants a rainbow blanket, he'll get a rainbow blanket, especially because he keeps using my woolen blanket and spilling stuff on it, and it's driving me bonkers. He spilled a whole cup of orange juice onto my non-superwash blanket the other day and I freaked out and he was freaking out <laughs> and he was freaking out because he wanted me to put the orange juice back in the cup which three-year-old logic I was freaking out because I didn't want a stain so I've actually washed the blanket for the first time and it turned out fine um it's a blanket I should have brought it um should I show it to you let's show it to you all right, so this is the blanket. I don't think I was podcasting when I made this, although I did show it at some point, I think. This is the blanket I cast on basically New Year's e uh, New Year's last year, so exactly a year ago, pretty much. Um, and this is holding all kinds of sock yarn minis, which are super wash, but held together with a cone of um, woolly knit British wool, which is a non-super wash yarn. And I love it. This is probably our most used blanket. It's absolutely humongous. It is massive. It used 820 grams of mini skeins or like sock leftovers and probably a similar amount of woolly knits yarn. So yeah, I've never washed this um, because it's a blanket, but my son spilled something on it and he spilled it on a section where you could really see it. <laughs> so I actually did put it in the washing machine because you can put non super wash with things in the washing machine if you know how to wash them. It's just a bit dicey, but I risked it because this is so huge. This would have been really hard to wash otherwise. Like I was thinking about washing it in a tub, but I just wanted the orange juice gone as quickly as possible. So what I do is, and I do the same for um, like my socks and all of that, they all go in the machine, um, is I put it on a cold, delicate cycle. Some people have wool cycles, I just have a delicate one make sure it's cold and um, I put the spinning down to 800 and then once it was done I actually just did another spinning cycle again on 800 so that by the time this came out of the machine it was actually like it, it wasn't that like sopping wet anymore and then I just laid it out on the floor and it dried really quickly and now because this non superwash British wool like fluffed up it's actually even nicer it's definitely gotten softer and I really like it. So yeah, that was the backstory. Why I was like, okay, fine, I'll make my son a blanket and I'll make it out of um, an acrylic yarn because A, budget, B, it's going to get washed a million times and we don't have to be precious about it. So I finished my blanket to start his blanket. And this is the yarn that I'm using because he wanted a rainbow yarn and I wanted something that like doesn't burn your retinas. Like, this is going to be in my living room. I presume, who knows, but it might very well be, so I wanted something that I can look at as well without like it being crazy, crazy bright, 
So I got this here and I got this on a Black Friday sale actually. This is papatya cake, which I think is a Turkish yarn. And this was quite affordable, I will say. I think I got three balls of this. And there are there 150 gram balls or 200 gram balls? 150 grams, 540 meters. I think I got all three for like 15 pound. So that was quite good. Um, and yeah, so I decided I'm going to make a really simple blanket just so I can have, you know, the, the colors do their thing. And this needs to be, you know, a sort of quick project. He really wants a blanket. I think the yarn is doing all the work for me, so it should be quite straightforward. I have three cakes. I'm not sure if I need three. I might be okay with two, but we'll see. So I started it last night, and it doesn't look like very much. This is where we are. So I did a foundation... What's it called? Is it a chainless foundation row? And I was going to go with a V-stitch blanket, so I started that. But it didn't really work with the yarn. Like, I don't know what it was, but I was I love a good V-stitch. But I feel like it, 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 it was gapy. I didn't enjoy the process. And so I actually ripped back. And I'm just doing a granny stripe. And I think it'll be great. I'm definitely enjoying the process a lot more, if you can say that after, you know, a tiny bit. I hope I chose the right width. I just sort of guessed because I don't want it to be too huge. I want it to be like nice and portable for him, but also I don't want him to grow out of it within, you know, a year. But I think it should be fine and I can always, you know, add a border. So there you go. I think I, st I chain 139, 140, something around that number again, using my four millimeter hook. And I was going to use this, which I talked to you last week. I really love the feel of this hook. This is my first ergonomic hook by Prim. But it didn't work with the yarn. It was awfully squeaky. Like, I don't know, something like the plastic of this and the acrylic, it was not working. So unfortunately, I can't use it. I would have loved to use this. So I am once again using my trusty Knit Pro Waves, which I really enjoy. They're just... They're easy, they're cheap, they work perfectly. I've tried like, a couple of, you know, fancier brands and this I keep coming back to this. So that's good. So yeah, I've started. Um, in hindsight, it's weird. It's got like an orangey bit here and I didn't catch it when I started. And when I did catch it, I wasn't ready to rip all of this back because the foundation chain thing always takes me a million years. So it's not great. I don't love that there's like a tiny bit of a different color at the bottom. But, I mean, it's affordable yarn, like, there's only so much you can expect, and no one's going to care beyond myself, so we'll be fine. So that's one thing that I started, and then you may remember that I mentioned that I have a yarn advent by We County Yarns using the JC Rennie yarn, because I love JC Rennie. If you don't know, they're a British mill, you can buy their yarn in cones. And then it's really quite affordable. It's like a proper, like, British non-superwash yarn. I absolutely love it. Like, it's probably my favorite of all the sort of, like, Holst, Woolly Knit, Jameson and Smith. Like, I love JC Rennie. And because they essentially wind off 10 grams of yarn per day, it's not that expensive. I think the entire advent calendar, including the pattern, was maybe £35. I'm making this up, but something along those lines. Um, and what you do is you get a pattern to go with it and every day you knit a bit of color work and then in the end you'll have a beautiful color work cowl. So spoiler alert, I don't think this is very popular so I doubt anyone has this but if you do and you don't want to be spoiled I'm going to show my progress up to day three and yes, isn't it only December 2nd? Yes it is. But for day one all it said was to use like color one, which is this, I think it's called chrome, and cast on and did one round. And I was like, yeah, no, I want to I wanna do some color work. And I'm going to fall behind on this anyways. And if I don't fall behind, on the 24th, I'm going to be on a plane to Germany. So there's no way I'm finishing my cowl on the 24th. So I'm a day ahead and I'm going to keep it up as long as I can. So yeah, this is where we are. 
So because it's a cowl, cowl you can either start um, with a provisional cast on or you can just, you know, stitch it all together in the end to turn it into a cowl. So that's what I'm doing, which is why it's rolling a little bit, but I'm just gonna, you know, stitch it together in the end and then it'll be fine. And this is where I've gotten so far. So there's two different reds in it. They're very, very similar. This one is Tudor, which I think is stunning. Like if I ever need a Christmas red, I'm going to order Tudor from JC Reddy because it's beautiful. And then this one is Grenadine, which is quite similar. And I have obviously finished the first chart and I'm now halfway through the second chart. And I went down to a three millimeter needle just because I wanted a needle this size and I only had three and 3.5 millimeter, but it's creating a beautiful fabric. I don't think I've used JC Rennie in color work, but it's just stunning. I love it. And actually this sort of circumference, is it 96 stitches, something like that? It's like every time the chart you know, is a little bit challenging, the round goes really quickly, so it's actually really entertaining to knit. And yeah, I love it. I can't wait to see where this goes. I'm just blindly trusting the pattern. The colors I have seen, they're beautiful. So yeah, I kind of wait to you know sort of get into different colors as well and see what happens. Yeah, so that's what I've been working on, and I am actually undecided. I feel like this is already turning into a long episode, but um, I might give you a quick update tomorrow. I've also recorded myself earlier trying to crochet on my son's blanket while he was trying to help. He actually asked that he wants to learn how to knit and crochet now, which is really cute. And he, he is, he's nowhere near sitting still for long enough to do it but it was very cute that he was interested so I was trying to work on his blanket and he was sitting on my lap unwinding the yarn for me and just making my life quite difficult but it was very funny so if the footage isn't horrible I'll put that in um and yeah I will see you guys later little update while I have a two-year-old next to me a three-year-old next to me I finished the socks! I did finish the socks after all, so another finished object which is very, very exciting. We've made it to Sunday, December 3rd, um, and I have moved into our conservatory just to get some peace and quiet to be able to record. Um, and yeah, I've made some progress. Um, first up, let me show you my son's rainbow blanket, which is looking very rainbowy. But look, I am just starting to fade into the blue. And yes, it is questionable why there is brown in my rainbow blanket, but he loves it. It doesn't matter. And I'm so glad I went with the granny stripe. Um, it's really enjoyable to crochet. We've just been hanging out, listening to Christmas music and yeah, just, you know, getting a bit of the Christmas spirit in. And I've been crocheting away on my blanket, which because the I think I've, got, I've chosen a good width. It's not going to be massive, but I think it's just right for a three-year-old. So the rows go quite quickly and you know what? Um, considering how fast I'm going through, <laughs> this is my first out of three cakes, I said I might only use two. Now I'm starting to think, I hope three is enough. Um, this is eating more yarn than I thought, but then again, I'm just eyeballing this, so who knows? And I can always get some more if need be. Um, but yeah, I've made some progress on this. I have also been working on my We County Yarn Advent um, Cowl. And once again, I'm a day ahead. I'm on day four, so spoiler ahead. Um, I've just finished day four and we finally changed colors. Um, this is just a cream. I think it's actually called cream as well. And um, yeah, here we are. Um, this will look so much nicer once it's blocked, but I think it's quite cute. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see where this goes. I'm actually really enjoying um, looking at the colors every day. I'm forcing myself not to sort of skip ahead and see what color comes up until the day is actually here. And yeah, it's just the perfect amount of knitting. I'm really, I think this may be my favorite sort of yearly advent I've ever done. A, it's quite affordable. B, it's actually more about, you know, the knitting and doing a little chart every day. And yeah, I'm really, really enjoying it. 
so that's that. And I'm not sure if I mentioned, I went down a needle size, so I'd recommend 3.25. I went down to a 3 millimeter, knowing that I am a, if anything, I'm a looser knitter rather than a tight knitter. And I think you're supposed to have 12 centimeters across. And I have 16. <laughs> so that tells you something. I like it though, because I didn't want my cowl to be too skinny. Um, I'm not having massive amounts of yarn left. I think I'm fine. Um, I've been fine so far. You use most yarns for sort of two days. Um, for this bell chart, I have omitted two rounds. A, because I'm lazy and because my gauge is bigger, the cowl is going to be longer anyways. Um, although if it turns out really long, I'm just going to turn it into a scarf, which I think is actually an option in the pattern. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of yarn, it's generous enough that it doesn't matter. And I like the fact that it's a bit bigger. So that's my cowl. And then, you won't believe this, I actually picked up my woolly waffles sweater last night, which... That's been languishing for a long time. Um, so this is the Woolly Waffles sweater by Stephen West, who also he has a whole Woolly Waffles collection. It's just a really fun sort of stitch, and I can't show it to you very well because it is scrunched up on the needles, but you should still be able to get the idea. It's a top-down raglan, um, and the only reason I stopped yesterday is because I need to get a new ball of yarn. Um, toddler alarm. Um, yeah, so I've picked this up again. And the thing is, because I have not worked on this, I found it quite hard to get back into the pattern. Not that I really need the pattern. I am on the, I've done all the difficult bits. I just need to, you know, keep increasing in pattern. But at some point I need to split four sleeves. And I thought the pattern wasn't incredibly straightforward, but that may be because I obviously paused. I also don't know which, which ties I'm making anymore. So I just need to sit down, preferably tonight, and I think I just need to work it out. Ideally, you know, separate from the sleeves, because then I can just do whatever I want. It's just that sort of hump of, you know, putting the mental energy into figuring out where I am. But yeah, I do really enjoy it. Um, this is the Rowan Felter Tweed um, in the mineral colorway. I will say I'm a little bit wary about this because you may remember I knit a hat for my husband out of that yarn and that stretched and stretched and stretched and stretched um, just with getting wet um, and I wasn't impressed by that because yes it is alpaca but there's also I think quite a high wool content in it so this shouldn't happen and the same happened with my cardigan that I made remember the sort of dove grey cardigan oh no hang on Sorry. Um, yeah, so my cardigan stretched out a fair bit as well. I think it won't matter so much with a jumper. And this one is meant to be, at least for me, I wanted to be a bit oversized and with positive ease. But it's making me think I shouldn't make it too oversized because it's probably going to get bigger in time anyways. So I might go for a slightly tighter fit than I usually would and then just hope over time it'll stretch into a nice shape because it's not a matter of blocking I blocked my husband's hat like, and I blocked my, blocked my cardigan it's just that with time and wearing it it stretches and I have rewashed and blocked my hu husband's hat and it's sort of gone back but not massively so so yeah a um, little bit worried about that but we should be okay so that's that, and I did want to show you my Moherino medley. I'm not going to go through all the yarns again, because I've done that in past episodes, so you can just go back. And I'm not sure if some of these dyes are dying anymore anyways. This is some really old stash yarn. But look, this is where we are. I haven't worked on this in a while, but I'd actually like to go back on this today. Because yeah, it's, it's such a fun pattern. When I started it, I couldn't stop. Um, I'm not sure where I was last time I showed it to you, but essentially it's all these, you know, little sections. And then now I think I've done all of them. I really like the ones with the big holes. I think it's really fun. So now I've started again with sort of the first section that started down here. And you just cycle through the different colors. And yes, it looks a bit crazy, but I think the more these colors mix, the more I just trust the pattern and trust Steven and keep going. It could be really cool and it's given me sort of like a frozen ice cream vibe it's really drapey as well with the mohair 
So yeah, I really quite like it. It's huge as well, considering I took one repeat out. It is still massive. So yeah, that's my Moherino medley by Stephen West. And I would really like to continue on this. Maybe now, maybe today. Um, we will see. Um, and that's my knitting content for this episode, which... So that's my knitting content for this episode. Um, these episodes are getting a bit longer, I think. But because they're sort of vloggy, you can, you know, switch off anytime. I think it's, you know, up to everyone. Uh, no one's forcing you to keep watching. Um, but yeah, if you're only here for the knitting, then I will see you soon, probably next week. If you do want to stick around, I just quickly wanted to talk to you a little bit about our sort of life, Christmas, all of that. Um, I'm really making an effort this year to not let everyone else's stress affect me too much because we've had a lot going on really. Honestly, the last couple of weeks have been really exhausting with my son being quite ill um, and house troubles and work. We're both working now. And I mean, work is always crazy towards Christmas, isn't it? Um, so yeah, it's just been a lot. And then you get the added pressure of all the Christmassy bits. And I am just really making an effort to keep it simple because I don't believe you have to do everything. Um, I am not doing Elf on the Shelf. I planned but didn't do a fancy advent calendar. He loves his, my son loves his little chocolate one and it's fine. Um, so I'm really trying to, rather than like stress out making everything perfect and, you know, having a perfectly decorated house, to rather, you know, just make it cozy and have a nice time. Um, as an example, we have this massive Christmas tree and this year we decided not to put it up and just have a small one because I think my son would demolish it and I just wasn't ready. I just wasn't ready for it. So we're keeping it simple and I'm really enjoying it actually. And I'm constantly battling that as well with my knitting because I have all these ideas and I want to do all these things and I think you get bombarded with vlogmas and patterns and it's it's lovely but it's also it can be quite sort of stress inducing especially when you see everyone doing all the fancy things and taking all the christmas boxes and yeah i've just decided we've just decided not to do all of that i mean we were doing some stuff um we're doing some german christmas uh, traditions as well but yeah, I'm just honestly trying to slow down and actually enjoy this time rather than rush through it from like one thing to the next. Um, and so far, I mean, it is December 3rd, <laughs> but I think, I think we're succeeding. I think it's all, hopefully it should be okay. Um, and yeah, um, I think a lot of it is the mindset. Like I went out with friends for dinner on Friday. It was lovely, but Everyone just tends to be like talking about their stress and then you get stressed out and everyone just is this massive echo chamber. So just wanted to put it out there. If you love Christmas, if you love all the lights and all the things, go for it. Go nuts. Um, enjoy it. Um, but you don't have to. Um, it's okay to, you know, not have the fancy advent calendars and not spend all the money. And that's also fine. I feel like I'm not a Grinch, but I'm also not a Christmas person. Um... Like, I'm already sort of like, yeah, we'll like have the holidays and then I'll be happy when it's January as well. Um, so in terms of the holidays, um, we're actually flying to Germany on Christmas Eve, which will be a nightmare. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully after we return, um, I hope to still have to uh, be able to take some time off so we can also just, you know, be the three of us and sort of chill a little bit because I love that sort of slump after the holidays and... We'll see if it happens, but fingers crossed, it might. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's just a little bit of a life background story. We're also still trying to fix the house. Um, we have solved the mold issue, but we have realized that somehow <laughs> we have this silly, tiny little hallway that must have been attached to the house way after it was built. And I think it was just horribly built. So we have water coming in. That's why we've been having all these issues. So we've repainted it and all these things and now sort of like the paint is slowly deteriorating because there's water coming into our house. So we're having that looked at. Um, I broke our bathroom window. It's always been a bit sticky and the other day the handle just snapped off and that was the end of my 
uh, being able to open our bathroom window. So we're having that fixed tomorrow. Um, yeah, always, always new adventures. Um, <laughs> anyways, I'm going to go back to my knitting and family and yeah, just try to squeeze in as much knitting as I can. Um, tonight I'm actually having like a crafty night with some friends, a kids free crafty night. And I'm really excited and as much as I want to do all the crafty things that they are planning to do, I'm going to bring my knitting. I think I'm going to do a little bit of crafting and then I'm just going to sit and knit and let them do all the other crafty bits because I love knitting. So yeah, that's where I'm at. I hope wherever you are, you are safe, you are healthy, you're doing okay. Um, not too much Christmas stress weighing on you. And as usual, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you soon. Happy knitting. Bye.